Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, uh, all my friends. <coughs> yeah, a brief, quick uh, introduction about uh, my uh, about institution I come from. I come from uh, VIT, Vellore Institute of Technology. Uh, I should say this because there is another VIT in Bangalore that is Vishweshwaraya Institute of Technology. Uh, ours is a private university. Um, it's situated on 400 acre area. <coughs> and just to give you some more information about Vellore, it's, uh, it's lying between uh, Chennai and Bangalore, just exactly midpoint. We have at uh, present uh, student strengths, um, strengths of, uh, I mean all, all programs put together, we have 45 programs, all, all programs put together, we have about 15,000 students in one place. <coughs> And our school, that is now I belong to School of Computing Sciences, our school has 5,400 students. We have YMTech CSE, YMTech IIT, IT, BA, BTech uh, CSE, BTech IT. I'm mean, just mentioning only the engineering programs. There is one more special program, MS Software Engineering. Uh, I have to mention this because, you know, the, the, the course that, that we offer for BTech is not the same that is offered for MS. <coughs> And I am new to this uh, VIT because I recently joined. It's, uh, it's about uh, one year, one month only. Uh, but, uh, but I have handled courses for two semesters. And from that experience, I would like to share with you. And of course, I am just going to follow Professor uh, Fotek's uh, 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 titles here, syllabus, teaching schedule, tutorials, evaluation scheme, sample question paper, and so on. I, I think I have uh, the, the most of it. But if I miss anything, then I'll answer. <coughs> OK, I have syllabus here. So here for BTEC, this, this course is offered for uh, CSC and uh, IT people, it's a common course. And the students uh, would be in a class of 60. We have six batches of uh, BTEC CSE and four batches of BTEC IT. So totally uh, 10 batches, that means 10 into 60, 600 to 650 students we have just only from BTEC. MS, if I have to just mention that also because we have similar course but not title, not with the same title but different title. But uh, we have good coverage of uh, what we are really you know, interested in now, you know, the first programming course. There we have uh, uh, five batches, 60 each, so 300 people. So totally, um, uh, first year, 900 people will be really learning, 900 plus uh, students would be learning uh, this uh, kind of a fundamental course. Okay, Introduction to Computers and Problem Solving is the title that we have chosen. As we see here, um, uh, again, uh, as Professor Patek mentioned once, uh, we, we were not really interested in, uh, interested in being specific with one language, but then uh, we needed to go with one language because, you know, question setting, students understanding and so on. One teacher teaches Fortran, the other teacher teaches, you know, third teacher Pascal and third teacher teaches C, that will be difficult. That's why, though the title doesn't say programming in C, but still we have inside, if you see, as, as one of our friends from Wipro mentioned, aim, objective. I mean, every course, every course has this beginning, aim, objective. Uh, of course, it depends on, um, you know, when it was written, who wrote this aim and objective. I would strictly say, you know, it's only one year for me now, but I would otherwise uh, be interested in looking at every course here in the university and see that, you know, exactly the aim purpose fits into the purpose of the course. So here, aim, objective, you know, they, they, are, they are different anyway. An objective is the means to reach the goal. So that way we have given the student would acquire various problem solving techniques and will be able to uh, implement them in C language. <coughs> So again, to compare with the, my earlier speaker, we, we don't have C++ in this course. We don't have any object orientation, you know, introduced. Because, you know, we, we, are, we are believing, strongly believing that personal students need to uh, get into procedural uh, language concepts, and then object orientation can be done in, in any uh, future semesters. And moreover, as, as again, you know, we expect, all the teachers expect, in that class, we have, you know, just mixture, very good mixture of the people coming from various states. In our university, we, we, we have like that. In a, in a classroom, we have students from almost every state of India. And we have students from CSE, uh, uh, CBSE, uh, CBSE uh, what do you call the stream, uh, ICSE stream, state board stream, all these people we have. I mean, really, you know, it's a, it has been a challenge for us uh, to, to, to take everyone, uh, you know, along the understanding line. So it, it has been a very, very big challenge for any teacher. So that way, here, I mean, uh, every course would have five units. Um, yeah, here, you know, I have unit two, I mean, one here and a few, few lines, uh, introduction to computers and algorithms. 
and then it goes to uh, unit 2, unit 3 and so on. <coughs> I have another sheet of paper unit uh, 4 and 5, if I have to just to display that, I will do that. Titles are given there, you know functions is the title of unit 4 and unit 5 is, uh, is uh, structures. So we have five units in every course, I mean throughout the university, all the courses start across all 45 programs. Uh, five units, unit title should be there and, and it should specify the topics under that title. Now again, um, when it comes to individual teacher, it is up to the teacher to go a little beyond the topics that are mentioned in the syllabus. I mean he has or she has the freedom to go and discuss anything in that. But we don't normally, uh, normally uh, call, call upon the people unless you know they are, they are from very weak background. There are people, I mean because you know in CBSE stream they, they do uh, come with background of CC++ learned. There are state boards you know in India where people would uh, have never looked at one statement of C language. We, we definitely have uh, that problem. The, so, but, but we don't do any extra but normally you know when they come to uh, us, the teachers, uh, we, we try to explain and so on. And at the end of the, end of the uh, syllabus, we, we have to, we are supposed to give, I mean actually you know, formally we have some textbooks but the teacher would always add to this list of textbooks, you know, more. In, in my case, I, I had uh, 12 books mentioned to them because again, you know, it, sometimes you know, books, uh, books have to give good readability to the student. I mean students have different readability. One student might like one book but that one book may not be suitable for another student, you know, based on the background that he has. And again, you know, the book that we, maybe, you know, the, the, the print quality is good, paper quality is good, uh, you know, illustrations are given, not given, all these go into matter. So taking all this, the, the good mixture we gave, but this is what is, you know, really uh, uh, sent by my friend. If I had my own, I would have uh, 12 uh, textbooks, uh, you know, at the end of the syllabus. <coughs> so here, now, if you look at, uh, just quickly, you know, revise the syllabus, uh, we look at parts of the computer overview operating system, some introduction to computers, computing environment, all these are discussed. We, we don't you now simply jump to uh, C language, but C language actually, you know, starts from unit two, constructs of C. But here, as we go through uh, unit three and four, we start with structures in first BTEC level. I mean, beyond that, we don't go. In the sense, pointers are not, not covered, uh, files are not covered. Normally, you know, any C textbook would have all these chapters. I mean, with reference to that kind of, you know, standard textbook, we are seeing that, you know, they are not taught in the first semester in this course. But the where else do they complete C learning, I mean, uh, in the first year? I mean, it comes in the second semester as a different course. In the second semester, the continuation goes, but again, it is not simply only those two aspects of the files, pointers, and any other missed structure data or data structures and so on. Not only that, but plus, you know, we have, uh, 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 we have, we have algorithm related stuff. Perhaps I will display as we go on. <coughs> so, um, so let's see, uh, if we have to just uh, go with the, the syllabus of this course, uh, our schedule is like this. Um, for this course, we have three, three hours, three periods, each period is 15 minutes. Three periods we do for the theory, and this has a lab also. That is again three periods. And for the lab, the teacher who is teaching in the class should be there. Plus, he would be assisted by one or two more faculty members, not really technicians from the lab, but faculty members. Those faculty members are not at all related to the classroom. It's only for the lab they come. And again, one or two, how many you know, faculty members it depends on the strength. When it is 60 students, mostly we get two additional faculty members. The teacher who is handling, plus two additional. So three people are there really in the, in the lab. So this particular course has lab component also. So that way uh, uh, it's a schedule and actually you know if this is coming in um, odd semester we call it, uh, we call it uh, fall. We have two semesters, I mean three semesters, fall, winter and then uh, summer. Summer there are, there are people you know, who, uh, who, have, who had not cleared in the previous semesters would you know register here and then clear. And there are some courses and you know, the fresh courses offered also, but most of the guys, you know, de, um, um, you know, coming from far away places of India, they leave for home. But, but you will see, you know, small strength still. So when this is start in um, uh, the semester for, called the fall semester, what happens is we have longer period there. That means, you know, uh, number of hours we get for first year, uh, first semester would be around uh, 55 periods. And, and if I have to compare this with the MS, the MS I did, I also did similar course, but it is called programming in C, we had 75 periods. I don't know, somehow, you know, it happened because, you know, BTEC admissions are slightly, you know, um, 
prolonged in the sense admissions are not simply you know uh, ends somewhere. So, you know uh, fixing the start date of the semester would be a little bit uh, problem and uh, challenge. So, that is how we had little less than what we normally have. Normally, I mean for senior classes if you take we have in a semester 60 to 65 periods on the average and when we come to winter semester the number of periods are different. Number of periods would be slightly less because you know if we had three uh, months in the fall semester we do not normally get to three months maybe for various reasons you know uh, many holidays coming in Christmas coming New Year coming this that all, all our you know Indian festivals all these falling in uh, this period we do not get it is really not 65 periods but we we make up somehow up to 45 periods. <coughs> But at the same time just to go with the, uh, the number of periods that are available in the uh, winter semester we want to see that the courses that have three credits are offered. Most of the courses in this semester winter semester will be off three credits. I mean if you just go through uh, the, the, the credit kind of thing it is not quite uh, correct here. L would mean lecture, T would mean tutorial, P uh, practicals and C would mean uh, credit. So, this, this, is, this, is, this is wrong. In this place it is wrong actually for this course lecture was three tutorial was 0, uh, but again the tutorial uh, can be fine tuned by the teacher who is handling it and he has free, he, she has freedom to really include one and depending on you know his her availability and the students uh, uh, background and so on. Here the credit is actually 3. So, every course would have it in, in case and I have to show another, yeah if, if I have to go with this I mean this, this is how it is L T P C, L <coughs> L is uh, 3 and the credit is 3. So, what I mean credit is another you know, kind of weightage. There are certain courses which have credit 5. That is that is really you know a tough thing and 5 credit courses are not offered in winter for the reason that winter is a short, short, uh, short semester. So, here uh, we have credit here mentioned that way we go, uh, go with this. So, normally we are able to the teachers are able to cover these topics and, um, and uh, so special care should be given to certain section of the students as I said because they may have some weak background and that is uh, that is done half hours. Okay, um, if that is uh, about syllabus that I have to say and of course I can take questions later. Teaching schedule I think I have given. Okay, tutorials. Um, again uh, this course uh, has a tutorial only to uh, help the students not as a it is a fine tuned one only by the teacher it is not a standard one given by the university. So, teacher wants it he can he can have it he can he or she can mention right in the beginning of the semester we will have one tutorial period or two tutorial periods like this and this this. So, depending on uh, depending on the backgrounds and sometimes you know the teacher uh, luckily has all the students coming from the CBS stream perhaps he can go fast he does not need uh, uh, you know to fix a, a tutorial period that way we go. <coughs> So, I think we, uh, we have mentioned uh, lectures per week three periods and then it almost comes for uh, 60 uh, periods in a semester when this is handled in uh, fall semester. Lab I think we have mentioned lab with respect to infrastructure uh, our university has uh, I mean overall if I have to you know, still have to say overall things uh, we have 1000 workstations and desktops including servers. I am not very sure how many servers we have you know placed in different buildings and so on. But we have uh, you know fiber, fiber, fiber cable running across the campus and we have complete uh, uh, campus wide Wi-Fi. I mean I mean I mean students can access um, uh, intranet from anywhere and so on. Uh, that way uh, your lab would have normally you know 60 to 70 machines. Uh, mostly IBM machines or Lenovo machines recently. Uh, this is what I have seen and good configured machines. So, technicians are always available there and the faculty strength if you ask me the school of computing sciences has uh, uh, today 240 and uh, next year they want to raise it to 300. I mean only school of computing science I am talking about there are 6 schools in the university and total strength is 1050. So, since we have you know these many uh, <laughs> teachers really we never faced any problem in uh, allocating a subjects and so on. But at the same time uh, winter semester if you take the load on any every teacher any teacher would be slightly less than what they uh, they would have in uh, uh, fall semester because it is a longer period more courses are offered also ok. In, in if, if I if I have to tell by myself I had for fall uh, for fall I had um, uh, two theory uh, two labs. But now in winter I have uh, two theory uh, no labs. So, so I continue with I mean there is a policy that whoever taught semester one uh, 
portion of this uh, you know, particular subject, the same teacher you know, is supposed to, to handle the next semester's continuation, continuation of that course. So that way we have, we have to plan there. And the other course I'm handling is for MTech students. I'm not bringing it anyway, that is not the subject now. Anyway, high performance computing is what I uh, uh, teach MTech students, MTech CS students. Okay, um, so third, third, or third or so, how many teachers I have said, how many students, uh, I think I've said, our class normally has 60 to 65 students, it varies. 60 to 65 students, quite naughty, right from second semester, they're quite very naughty, and it's uh, difficult to, to really manage unless the teacher is really, you know, potent here. So if he misses and then he's really you know, losing his uh, life and uh, perhaps he comes, out of the, <laughs> he comes out of the class crying only, okay? I mean, that doesn't happen, you know, they, they, they can manage if you have good teachers. <coughs> the evaluation scheme, okay. Um, uh, in a semester we have, uh, we have things like this, we have CAT, CAT 1, uh, CAT 2. CAT stands for uh, Continuous Assessment Test. Okay, so we have, uh, I mean, maybe this, this is in place of your mid-sem exam or whatever you, you call here. There at VIT we have CAT 1, CAT 2. This comes, CAT 1 comes after, uh, after a month from the beginning of the course or semester, and CAT 2 from there, one month. And there will be one more month or half a month or approximately one month wise before they face a term end. But here the marks distribution evaluation is like this. It's purely under test only. No other things, uh, purely test this, uh, they give out of 15, finally. Of course, the question may be, you know, out of 50. Question may be out of 50, but that would be converted to 15, 15, totally, you know, cat one, cat two, 30. Okay, uh, then there is one more component within the semester that is called internal marks. That is 20. What this would be off, this would be off, uh, uh, Quizzes, assignments, uh, seminars. Normally, we don't give for this course because this is, uh, you know, initial first semester. The students have just now come in. It's not a good idea to give. No, to senior people, no seminar is okay. Uh, you know, they would be doing it meaningfully also, you know, quite, uh, quite good and so on. But with the, with junior or sophomore people, no, we don't give this. So, but assignments. But we we have big challenge there that you should not copy this that. You know, all that is uh, there, but uh, somehow it depends on the teacher. Teacher is you now very strict, seeing that and everything. So assignments, we have assignments, quizzes, unannounced tests, small unannounced tests. I mean, quickly, you know, for, for 15 minutes or so before the start of the class. So they finish, for 15 minutes, finish the test, and then start the class. Maybe you know, corrections will be done later, and the marks will be, uh, you know, announced later, maybe the next day. So that way we have internal marks 20. This is purely in the hands of teacher. Teacher has freedom. But CAT 1, CAT 2 is university scheme. I mean, this is not in teacher's hand. It's the university conducts throughout for all the students. Maybe if, if, I'm, if I'm not wrong, for all 15,000 students, it comes in some seven days or eight days. It's done, properly arrangements made, and so on, so it's done. So with this, then, you now we have total 50 within the semester before they go to uh, term end. Now, the, the, the next, uh, the final examination is called the term end examination. We normally call T. And this is for 50. They'll be writing for 100. Person will be set for 100, but finally the conversion is done to out of 50, and totally they have 100 marks. This is how for every course it is evaluated. For all the programs, it is you know MSc uh, Biotechnology or uh, BSc Computer Science or BTEC CSE or whatever it is. You know. So this this is the thing that is followed as for the evaluation of the students uh, concerned in a semester. <coughs> And with regard to projects, as Professor was mentioning, we normally don't give at the first year level any projects, you know. But of course, out of interest, they come because you know, they had learned a lot of, you know, C, uh, earlier uh, in CBSC, CBSC, they come with some ideas, they would come to the teacher, sir, ma'am, can I do, you know, project, can you suggest some projects and so on. So a lot of students, and I have done it myself. I mean, when we do uh, teaching of C, perhaps nowhere, you know, we think of, you know, C graphics, we never do that. You know, fundamental C, uh, C titles, as we have mentioned, the uh, syllabus we do. But, but then when they come like that, and just for, for, for an instance, we, we tell them you uh, code C, I mean, graphics calculator. I mean, you, you have GUI calculator kind of thing in Windows. So same way, you, you do, you program graphics calculator in C language. And uh, presto, in a week, they get it. They go to the library, refer to uh, kind of, you know, graphics books and they make it, they are very, they are very happy. There are students like this going forward, but at the same time, you know, we cannot assume that for the average of the class. 
that is not good also for the part of the teacher. You know, there's a good spectrum in the class. We have to, we have to see that, you know, every student, maybe the last student is really understanding, he's taken back. He should be handheld, basically. That should be the teacher's, you know, responsibility is what many teachers, you know, in our, in our I mean, in our, in our campus, we think. So that uh, is, I think, uh, I have said uh, the details I want. Sample question, let me quickly check all these I printed a while ago. Uh, here, uh, this is um, actually uh, a different course, not the same course, second semester uh, programming fundamentals course. Uh, but then this is from another teacher. He had prepared a model question, eight into five, 40, part A. I mean, you have two parts, part A and part B. But what we really follow, uh, I would not go through this, but maybe you know, I would just to talk. We, we have model question like this, part A and part B, two parts we have for every course. Part A is, um, is of uh, 20 questions. They have to answer all, each carrying two marks, total 40. And part B, they have to answer five questions, either or type. So totally you would have 10 questions basically. I mean, it, the distribution is like this. Distribution is quite uniform across the syllabus. We have five units from each unit there would be one part B question. And from each unit, there would be four questions in part A. The distribution should be, you know, even. That is, that is really, you know, expected. That is, the, that is a norm. But if a teacher a little bit for some reason, you know, uh, violates that, you know, I mean, deviates from that, it's not a serious, uh, serious thing that is looked upon. You know? So, that, I mean, many things are excusable there. But normally, it goes with the standard. And there is um, uh, academic council in the university consisting of a big people. Um, uh, there, there are people from IIT Madras. There are people uh, from IISC, not, not from this part of uh, India, I believe. Um, and the chancellor, uh, our vice chancellor is uh, D.P. Kotari. Our professor may be knowing, I don't know. D.P. Kotari is our vice chancellor. Uh, he was former director of IIT Delhi. Um, so, you know, they, they, they convene a meeting, I think, every year. It's called academic council meeting and the Board of Studies is uh, determined there. Uh, and, and when this uh, happens, they go through revising any syllabus, changing anything, pattern, and so on. So I think they keep everything very dynamic. So that way, uh, I mean, we teachers enjoy sometimes. So, so here, now if I have to just continue and show uh, question number six, then seven, eight, like this, and part B, nine, 10, 11, and it says, you know, answer any questions. I mean, this particular pattern is like that, but we don't strictly follow this. I mean, he quickly sent this morning, uh, you know, seeing my mail uh, I sent yesterday. So anyway, um, so the, the, the pattern I have already explained to you. Okay, that is uh, it. Uh, semester PDA is uh, the next thing that uh, I have to talk about. I think I have already said that. Uh, winter semester is slightly shorter, two and a half months plus something. And fall semester is slightly longer, three, three months. I think sometimes we get slightly more also. <coughs> And it starts uh, semester, uh, uh, fall semester starts in June, July, uh, goes up to November. And winter starts from uh, December sometime. I, I think we, even before Christmas it starts. And we have some festivals and they have, uh, students have some five day festival in uh, like, you know, college day kind of stuff. Very uh, grand, uh, grand thing and so on. And it goes up to April. Now the exam has to start I'm here, but the exam is going on there. Practicals have uh, started. Model answers, I, I do not really have, but otherwise we have short, uh, you know, quick, I mean, kind of bullet points answers we keep somewhere. I mean, not, not to publication, uh, but somewhere uh, we keep. And lab and computing environment, I think I have already mentioned, uh, we have 15 to 16 labs, each consisting of 70 machines, all networked uh, across the campus, across the lab, and so on. We have, uh, in, in a lab, if you take, I think we have, uh, we have every machine dual boot uh, abled dual, uh, with the uh, Windows and Linux. Red Hat has, has set up its own lab in our campus. It has some 70 machines. And any upgrade that happens to Red Hat, they come and bring it here. And, uh, and I think a lot more. We have Blade Server, IBM Blade Server, and so on. I think uh, good facilities we have. And that's not a problem for the students and teachers as well. Uh, I think uh, I have mostly <laughs> Uh, done with it. Professor, thank you very much.